This is Math 152, and we are looking at uh, Section 2.3, Part 2. And we're still doing volumes of a solid over rotation. We're going to look at two different options. Uh, one is basically, what if we rotate about something other than the x or the y axis? How do you deal with that? And the other is, what if we uh, rotate uh, between two shapes? Like instead of just all the way to the x axis, what if we do that? Okay, so let's start with this one. Uh, we have this function f of x is x squared. It's uh, from the x-axis down to the y-axis. Uh, x is going to run from 1 to 2, and it's going to be rotated around the point x equals negative 2. So let me get a sketch here. x is going to run from 1 to 2, and it's x squared. So it's that part right there, and then it's down to there. So notice this right here is our shaded region. We're going to rotate that around. Oh, and it doesn't get rotated around the x-axis, it gets rotated at x equals 2, a uh, negative 2. So this right here is what we're rotating it around. So it actually goes kind of a long way, right? It's like that, that, there's that inside part. So it looks like uh, basically this shape right here. Uh, we know that we are doing this um, around the, basically the y direction. So we're going to do everything relative to, to x. So we have this change in x. Here's our dx. And our disk would come around like this then. Cylinder, I should say. And so let me, let me sketch what I've got for my cylinder. So got that little distance right there. I notice that the height is just the function, so that's that's just still an x squared. But now the radius, right? The radius isn't going just from just from the y axis. If it was, that radius would be x. That distance is x. But notice it actually is centered here at negative two. It's not drawn real well. Uh, that should be the middle of the shape. So here, let's just cheat a little. This distance is 2 and that distance is x so the radius uh, you can see it that way is actually x plus 2. one way to think about that is how far apart are these like this is at x this right here is at x this right here is at negative 2 and to get a distance between two things you could subtract x minus negative 2 which is x plus 2. Uh, if i cut it and lay it out flat into a rectangular box. There's my change in x. There's my x squared. And notice this is the circumference of the circle. So 2 pi times the radius. So those are what I'm adding up. I'm going to let it run from 1 to 2. There's my setup. And then from there, I can go ahead and do that, uh, do that integral and get my answer. Just a little, I'll do a couple steps here. Bring that 2 pi out, distribute that x squared into there, x squared plus 2x squared uh, times dx, and then you're on your way. You'll get 101 pi over 6. But what I'd like you to notice is when we do our setup on these, um, the sketches are going to help a lot. I mean, you can just think that it's always just going to be, you know, your offset minus whatever you're rotating around. That's, that's, that's true. But it, drawing the picture just gives you some really good perspective for it. Let's take a look at this one. So we're going to find the volume between these two. Um, I'm sorry. Take the area between these two functions, rotate it around the y-axis uh, from x equals 1 to 4, and then we will find the volume for that. So let's get a sketch for that. I'm going to uh, grab it in Desmos. And there it is. I can see that I'm going from 1 to 4 on my x values. So there's the shape right there. There's the area. We're going to rotate around the y-axis. So this way. So this will come out like this. Come out like that. Have this little hole in the middle like that. So there's our shape. So we're going around the y-axis, so let's 
think about what our disk is going to look like. There's my change in X right there. This would come around my cylinder like that. So if I grab that, look like that. I can see my radius is X. But now this height. Notice this height. There's a, there's a lot of a picture in here. So I'm going to take some of it out just so we can see that that height is bound between these two functions, right? Like this height, as, as we uh, change that X value, as X gets bigger or smaller, it's gonna be still the difference between those two functions. So this function is the square root of X, and this function is one over X. So this would be the distance between those two, uh, square root of X minus one over X. Great, and if we cut that, fill it out, there's our change in x, right? That's the rim. Um, the height is root x minus 1 over x. And this distance is the perimeter, uh, right? The circumference of that circle. So 2 pi times x. So my setup for this should be from 1 to 4, 2 pi x times, I wrote 1 half. This should be 1 over x, sorry. Square root of x minus 1 over x dx. And I'm on my way. You know, um, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but you could take out the 2 pi and then uh, distribute that x into there. x times root x, right? That's x to the 2 halves times x to the 1 half. So x to the 3 halves plus 1. And then on your way, you can go ahead. Now, notice on this problem, using that cylinder method was like pretty easy if we had to do this one using disks um, that would be a bear because we would have to think about uh, these these consecutive disks in here looking down on it and then we'd have to break it up into parts because this part would give us washers uh, this part here would give us some washers where we have this minus that but then we'd have to break it up here and do washers based on the other line from here. You could do it that way. It's substantially more work. Uh, your text has a nice table in it. Uh, it's figure two, three, four, about like maybe how to choose which one you're, you're gonna go about doing, which, which method you wanna use, because ultimately it comes down to making a good choice. So you have less chances to make computational error. So take a look at this, uh, think about it. And the rest of what I'm gonna do right now is just thinking about like, what might be a good way to set this one up? Let me get a picture of this posted from Desmos. So there's our y equals x cubed right there. Uh, x is 0, so that's here. Y is 8, 6, 7, 8. So that's here. So notice that we are bound here to here. And we're going to rotate this about the y-axis. First thing to consider is what exactly are we rotating around the y-axis? And the way that these are stated, um, give us a hint. So there's my x cubed. x equals 0 is here. And y equals 8 is here. So it's the area that's bounded by those, by those conditions. So it's this area right here. That's the part that is, um, that's rotated. So if we go to rotate that around the y-axis, it's going to look like this. Oh, that's not bad. It's a nice, solid, nice, solid shape. Yeah, no, no holes in it, anything like that. So thinking about this one, um, you could go either way. If I set this one up with, uh, with cylinders, there's my cylinder. And I want you to notice, like setting this one up with cylinders, the height of the cylinder isn't like this straight, simple thing to, to figure out. Like if, let me draw it, what I have. So, so this distance here is X. Okay, that's pretty clear. But notice that this, this height isn't X, isn't X cubed. Like X cubed is this distance, right? X cubed is this distance right here. So if I wanna know uh, the actual height of the cylinder, the whole distance is eight. It's actually eight minus that x cubed. Cut that out. dx eight minus x cubed, two pi x, and you can set it up. 
I'm going in the x direction. So this would be 2 cubed is 8. 0 to 2, notice I'm, I'm using the x's, right? The changes in x. 2 pi x times 8 minus x cubed. Dx and you're on your way. It might have been easier to set this up with, uh, with disks. Right, like solve this for y and do everything in terms of y, and it might be less complicated to set it up that way. Just some. Another one. How about this one, I've got that shape uh, bounded from two to three, and y equals zero, so it goes all the way down to the um, x-axis and rotated about x equals five. So I'm going to grab something, a graph from Desmos here. And let's see, here's x equals 2, here's x equals 3, and it's rotating around this x uh, equals 5. So something like this, that little thing coming down. Something like this, has that little hole in the middle. All right, so if I go to uh, do this with uh, cylinders, I think that's a good way to do this one. Grab this, and it would, I'd have a cylinder that looks something like that. So let me pull that out of there. Just my dx. Uh, my height is just the function, right? It just goes straight down. So that height is 1 over 5 minus x. And now this radius, though, isn't just x, right? Because this distance here is 5. But this distance here is x. So what I want, though, is this distance. So I can tell that my radius is going to be 5 minus x. So if I cut that out, just so I can see my shapes, I have my change in x there, my rim, uh, my height is 1 over 5 minus x, and then my width is going to be the circumference of that circle. So 2 pi times the radius. So I go to set up my integral, and I'm running from 2 to 3, 2 pi times 5 minus x, uh, times 1 over 5 minus x. Look at that. That's really convenient. Uh, dx, pull that 2 pi out. I got integral from 2 to 3 of just 1 of, of dx, and you are on your way. You end up with 2 pi. A few more setups here. It's already shaded for me, and I want to come up with the volume if I rotate it about the x-axis. So if I rotate that about the x-axis, it's going to look that. You know, to me, um, I could set that up using, using cylinders, but man, that just looks like a classic disk problem to me. Right, like I can just do this with concentric circles. I th I feel like that would be less work. Um, everything like ar around the x. So let's think of this as concentric circles. Right, we're we're not doing we're doing discs here. We're not doing cylinders. So this is just a collection of circles. I just have this little change in x here, right? Because it's a disc. Um, and my radius, then, is the height of this, which is just this. And I'm going to add up concentric areas of this circle. So area of the circle is pi r squared. So my integral for this, and again, I'm not doing cylinders. I'm doing disks. I'm doing these concentric circles. Um, and remember what I'm saying is these are, these are circles. If I think of them as disks, this little width here is, uh, is the change in x. And I'm letting that, you know, that distance go infinitesimally small. So this would be uh, pi times the radius squared dx. And this is like a problem that we did a few chapters ago. And then I could just uh, work, oh yeah, from 1 to 2. No, from 2 to 4, sorry. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to do this whole thing, but take the pi out. Square that, x to the fourth minus 4x cubed plus 4x squared, dx, and you are on your way. In case you want to work it on out, you should get 496 fifteenths pi. But notice we could have done cylinders. Uh, it would have been a lot of work. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it would have been so much work because we would have had to 
make this in terms of y, which is like, how do we even, that feels like a lot of work. <laughs> I, I think this was a better choice. All right, so let's do this next one. We're going to take this, uh, this one about the x-axis as well. Something like that. I'm thinking washers, right? Like if I try to do a cylindrical one on this and make cylinders, I'd have to get this in terms of y. That feels like a lot, uh, feels like a lot of work. So I'm going to do this in terms of washers. So if I pull that washer out of there, remember it has a, a little tiny thickness. There's my dx. This radius right here is the distance from here to the edge. So that's the 3x squared minus 2. This distance here, that's from the center to the x. So that's x. So if I go for the area, just the face of that, it's uh, the, this big radius squared minus the little radius squared, right? The big circle minus the little circle. So I can think of it as pi times uh, the big one squared minus the little one squared. That's the area of it. And then the volume would be times dx. And I'm going to let that run. What was my interval? One to two. Multiply that out, combine some like terms, and you are on. So again, this setup. Um, it looks like it's going to be easier doing it with this washer method. Use that washer method. You know, unless the directions specifically say use cylinders, but uh, there'll be somewhere you get some choice. Okay, and last one. This one is about the y-axis. So we're going to... So what's happening is the outside of this shape with that little scooped out hole uh, in the middle. All right, let's go to set this up. As I'm going around the y-axis, stuff solved for x kind of pushes me to think about, about cylinders. So there's my change in x. So my cylinder would look like this. That little rim is my change in x. Uh, notice my radius is just x. That's pretty straightforward. Now my height here changes, right? Because it's it's bound between this and this. So my height is going to be uh, the function that's up top minus the function that's down below. So if I cut that and fold it out, dx, there's my height, 3x squared minus x minus 2, just change the order. And then remember, this distance is the circumference of that circle. So pi x, and I'm running from 1 to 2, so I would say the integral from 1 to 2, 2 pi times x, length times width, uh, length times width times height, you are on your way, you know, just to keep going, take that 2x out of there, because it's a constant, distribute that x into there, 3x cubed minus x squared minus 2x dx, and uh, you can you can handle the rest of that. If you do, uh, I got 398 pi over 6. All right. Now, if you will indulge me, uh, just some super cool ideas. Uh, in geometry, you may have, uh, in high school geometry, uh, you may have, like, figured out ways to find the, the sphere, uh, volume of a sphere, or even, like, had to memorize a formula for it. Well, let's let's derive it. Um, so a method of shells to find the volume of a sphere of radius r. So we're going to come up with a general formula. So this is basically a sphere is like a circle rotated big. So um, like this this circle itself, if I just think about the flatness, not the 3Dness of it, uh, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Right. So if I think about that, if I graph that, this distance is r. And then that would just make a circle that's like this. And uh, that's okay, but like, I don't, trying to rotate that and then taking the derivative of that whole thing is going to be a little bit of a bear. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at this part of it to start with. And if I just solve for, uh, for y, subtract x squared, square root both sides. 
I get this. And that, that'll give me this shape. So there we go. And now if I, if I rotate that around, I could rotate that around and let it go from R to R. Um, I might be a little bit lazy. I'm just going to let it run from 0 to R. Rotate it around and then double it to get, to get two of these. Rotating this around, I'll get the top half of a circle. My disk is going to look like that. So notice I've got this distance right here, which is x. And I've got uh, this height here, which is just this, square root of r squared times x squared. And if I cut that and fold it out, the x. Got that. And then here I've got um, 2 pi times x. So let's set up that. And I'm notice that my integral is just going to run from 0 to r. And if I just do this integral, this is only half the basketball. So I'm going to double it. And then uh, running that from 0 to r. And then I have uh, length times width times height. So I end up here. To do this, I'm going to have to do some substitution here. So I, let me say... Uh, let u equal r squared minus x squared, du equals negative 2x dx. I've got the 2 in here. I've got an x in here. I've got the dx. I'm going to keep this 2 in here and pull out the pi. So I'm going to have a 2 pi. And then if I substitute this in, I'll have negative x. So the 2, the x, and the dx are here. The negative's in here, uh, square root of u. And I'm going to change my bounds, right? Like I'm going to run this through. So when x is 0, plug it into here, uh, this is r squared. And when x is r, r squared minus r squared is 0. So I'm going to pull that negative out. All sorts of things. What I can do is I can use this negation to switch that order. And square root of u is u to the one half. Great, let's keep going. So I have two pi times two thirds u to the three halves. So r squared to the three halves is the same as r cubed, right? Because you square root it, that's an r, then you cube it, you get that. So this times r cubed. Four thirds pi r cubed, which is the area for the volume of a sphere. So we can we can get these volumes, um, we can get like rules for these by using this calc. We can do the same thing for a cone. And I'll, I'll do a quick setup on this one, just so you see the setup. If I think about putting my axis right here, um, basically I have this line that's rotated around the y-axis. And know it's, it's going from 0 to r. And pull that out of there. That distance there, that is just x. Change in x, that's a little width that goes to 0. And now if I think about this height, Oh, I need an equation for this line. Well, this is, think about rise over run, h over r. So this is the, the line uh, y equals rise over run x, h over r x, just like that proportion. So what that does, though, is that gives me this distance right here, h over r x does. And what I want is this distance here, but I know that the, the total distance is h. So notice it should be h, that total height, minus that, I think it's blue part, gives me that. So this should be h minus uh, h over r times x, which I could write as h times 1 minus 1 over rx. Slice it open. Got my dx. I got my h times 1 minus 1 over rx. And I've got this, which was the circumference of that, 2 pi times x. 
Notice 0 to r. All these things multiplied together. 2 pi x times h times 1 minus 1 over r times x dx. Pi and h's are just constants, so I can pull those out. And then from here, I'm going to uh, distribute that x into there. And just to finish it, uh, just for the form of it, So when I plug this r into here, I get 2 pi h times 1 half r squared minus uh, 1 third. Notice it's r cubed over r, which simplifies to r squared. Uh, 1 half of them minus 1 third of them is 1 sixth of them. 2 times a sixth is a third. We get 1 third pi r squared h, which is your standard. Um, formula for the volume of a cone. All right, just a little bit of application there. Um, take your time setting these up, draw lots of pictures, sketch, check your answers, go back, take your time. Uh, post any questions you have or message me.